Vail Resorts is now the largest ski resort conglomerate in history, operating a whopping 41 ski resorts and driving more than a fifth of all North American skier visits last season. But this company isn't just about to let its ski industry dominance slip away. And in 2022 alone, Vail installed a stunning 18 new lifts across 12 different resorts. But if you've spent time at some of these mountains and seen the locations of some of these lifts, you might be wondering, what were they thinking? Why did Vail prioritize certain lift replacements over others, and why did it even build some of them in the first place? Well, in this video, we'll put on our Vail corporate hats and dive into the company's mindset for these sizable investments, and we'll break them all down into the six types of categories we believe they fall into. It's also worth noting that we didn't just randomly decide to put up this video when we did, and at the end, we'll dive into why right now is a particularly important moment in Vail Resorts' history to be having this conversation. Let's start with what's probably the least controversial of Vail's lift upgrade strategies, replacing slow lifts that hold down service to major terrain areas with fast ones. The best destinations offer high-speed lift service on most or all of their lifts served terrain these days, and there were certainly a few notable areas at Vail's mountains that were ready to see some patching in this regard. Examples of lift upgrades that fell or will fall into this category are Mount Snow's Sunbrook Express, Heavenly's North Bowl Express, and Anatash's upcoming Summit Express. We'd argue that all of the upgrades here were clearly needed, and it's going to be hard to find anyone who didn't find these to be palpable experience improvements. Next up, we have a category of lift upgrades that may not make immediate sense when you first look at a trail map, but start to become a lot more obvious as you spend more time at Vail's Mountains. A number of projects either replaced existing high-speed lifts with installations that ran at the same speed as the old ones, or added a new lift in an area that was already served by a modern, detachable lift. So why did these upgrades take place, even when the affected areas already seemed to offer sufficiently brisk uphill service? Well, even though the existing lift setups may have been fast enough, in many cases, they hadn't been able to handle the crowds that came through during peak times. Upgrading quads to six packs, or putting in a completely new lift in the most egregious cases, was intended to address the issue. Examples of lift upgrades that fall into this category are Breckenridge's Freedom Super Chair, Vail's Sundown Express, Whistler Blackcomb's Big Red Six Pack and Creekside Gondola, and Okimo's Quantum Six and Evergreen Summit Express. We'd argue that the outcomes of these installations have generally been positive but mixed. It's hard to contend they don't move crowds more efficiently up the mountain, but they come in the wake of increased visitation to every single one of these resorts, and just general record skier and rider visits across all of North America. And while these projects have probably done quite a bit to prevent the lines from becoming even worse, if you've been a peak time visitor at one of these mountains, especially Okimo or Whistler, the swelling crowds have probably overshadowed the experience improvements from the new lifts. And if you went on an off-peak weekday, there likely weren't any lines anyway, so the extra capacity probably wasn't very relevant. But while not everyone may find these lifts to be palpable improvements, and many will argue that other steps need to be taken to reduce crowds, there's no doubt they've all given their resorts more comfortable carrying capacity to work with. But some of the high-speed lift replacements in the past few years didn't actually have a huge impact on capacity, so why did they even get the green light? Well, it turns out that some of Vail's high-speed chairlifts, especially at its flagship Rockies resorts, have started to reach the end of their serviceable lifetimes and are getting to the point where they may not be able to operate reliably without a replacement in the next few years. Some recently replaced lifts that fell into this category were over 30 years old, making them among the oldest detachables in Vail's lift fleet. But wait a minute, you may be thinking. There are plenty of slower chairs that are over 40 years old and are still in running condition. So why is Vail spending money on replacing newer, faster lifts over slower, older ones? Well, it turns out that high-speed, detachable lifts have a lot more moving parts than slow, fixed-grip chairs, and as a result, there's a lot more to go wrong, especially as the lifts get older. As a result, these high-speed chairlifts really do need to be replaced more frequently than their slower counterparts, and by upgrading its oldest high-speed chairs, Vail is ensuring a reliable operating experience at its resorts for the years to come. Examples of lift upgrades that fall into this category are Vail Mountain's Game Creek Express and Keystone's Peru Express, both of which were upgraded from quads to six packs, but with only modest capacity changes. And while some will validly contend that North Star's Comstock Express six pack should fall into the reducing choke points category, we'd argue it fits here as well, 
As if it hadn't been 33 years old at the time of its replacement, it's easy to see other projects being prioritized first. It's also worth noting that Vail Resource hasn't exactly neglected its fixed grip lift fleet either. The company recently replaced several lifts that date back as early as 1972 at Adatash, Jack Frost, Big Boulder, Boston Mills, and Brandywine with modern fixed grip quads. Vail may not have felt the need to upgrade the lifts at the smaller, regional mountains to high speeds, but still felt that reliability upgrades warranted the investments. If you've made it this far through the video, you can probably agree that there's no better way to have fun during the winter than going on a ski trip. But let's be honest, there are very few things more complex than planning that trip, especially when it comes to navigating all of these new lift developments. Enter Peak Rankings Trips. We can plan your lodging, lift tickets, and even tell you what lifts to go on. To book a consultation, click the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. Okay. But even with the crowd and life cycle oriented lift upgrades in certain resort areas, you might still be puzzled by a handful of high speed installations in seemingly questionable areas. Why did Vail Resorts upgrade some of its shortest lifts near the bottom of its mountains, while some longer, more prominent chairs at the same resorts were passed over for high speed upgrades? Well, it all comes down to less experienced guests, and in recent years, Vail has wanted to make the on mountain experience for beginners as inviting as possible. As a result, some of the company's popular destinations have seen their older Bunny Hill lifts transformed into quick, easy to access high speed quads or six packs. Some might argue that beginners don't need these fancy lifts. After all, these lifts are short and these types of visitors are going to be taking quite a while to get down the slopes anyway, right? But thanks to their slower loading speed, detachable lifts are often much easier for beginners to load and get off of than traditional fixed grip chairs. Vail might contend this makes for a much more enjoyable experience when people are learning to ski or snowboard, making them more likely to stick with the sport and book return trips, especially at the mountains the company owns. Examples of lifts that fall into this category include Breckenridge's Rips Ride in upcoming 5 Super Chair, Stowe's Sunrise 6, and Mount Snow's Sundance Express. The Stowe and Mount Snow chairs do not exclusively serve green terrain and could validly also fit into the Reducing Choke Points category but both upgrades really made it easier for beginners to access lots of their respective mountains. And while they weren't detachables, a few of the brand new fixed grip quads that Vail installed at its regional northeast and midwest mountains were intended to increase capacity and improve the experience in beginner oriented areas as well. For our last category of investments Vail actually pulled the trigger on, we'll cover what's probably also the most exciting one. Lifts that serve brand new terrain that either previously did not exist in bounds or required hiking to reach. That's right, a couple of new Vail Resorts lifts did more than just enhance uphill service, they added access to completely new mountain zones. In the handful of cases over the past few years where Vail Resorts decided to install such lifts, the new skiable footprint addressed major terrain shortcomings that had previously left the pertinent resorts at a disadvantage compared to many nearby competitors. In the past few years, Vail Resorts has only spearheaded three expansion-focused lifts, Beaver Creek's high-speed McCoy Park Express and Fixed Grip Reunion Quad Lifts, which were installed for early 2022, and Keystone's Bergman Express Six Pack, which is on track for completion in late 2023 after a series of unfortunate delays. Both of these resort expansions were designed to address a lack of high alpine bull terrain. Beaver Creek's McCoy Park Lifts have allowed it to expand into a new bull-like beginner terrain footprint while Keystone's Bergman Bowl Lift will enable lift service to its above treeline bull terrain for the first time. While we won't be able to reserve final judgment on the Keystone upgrade until it's finished for the upcoming season, we will say that the McCoy Park expansion has been one of the most effective Colorado resort investments in decades, offering perhaps the best beginner bowl lift terrain in the state, and it wouldn't have been able to happen without the lifts that service it. And while these expensive expansions have been far less frequent than the other categories of lift upgrades discussed in this video, they're not exactly unprecedented. Vail Resorts has been slowly expanding its resorts with lift upgrades for years, including Breckenridge's extension to Peak 6 via the Zendo Chair and Kensho Super Chair, and Park City's merger with Canyons via the Quicksilver Gondola. Vail hasn't announced any additional terrain service lift expansions at this point in time, but we'll be following along to see if they come up with anything else. While Vail Resorts has put in a decidedly wild number of upgrades over the past several years, we would be remiss if we didn't mention some of the notable lifts that have been passed over. And for the most part, the missed opportunities are slow, 
fixed grip lifts that involve less than enjoyable ride times. However, these lifts involve unique circumstances that may have hurt the case for upgrades, even with Vail's strong revenue and cash on hand. Let's start with Park City, and while there are still a number of slow lifts across the massive 7,300-acre footprint, the resort's town lift stands out with the longest ride time, taking over 13 minutes to ride from bottom to top. Of Park City's 36 lifts, the town chair is the sixth longest at the resort, so why is it still a slow triple? Well, there are a couple of reasons for this, and they're not likely to change anytime soon. First off, the town lift starts in a historic part of downtown Park City, and as per local employees, upgrading the lift to a detachable would bring a lot more noise and infrastructure to this area, detracting from the charm. In addition, the town lift really doesn't serve that much terrain, only providing exclusive access to a handful of intermediate trails and functioning more as a real estate lift than anything else. As a result, it's really not that much of a priority compared to Park City's other lift projects. And that's without even getting into Vail Resources' relationship with Park City's Planning Commission, which recently forced a high-profile cancellation of two of the resort's lift projects at the last minute. Next up, we have Heavenly. And while the resort recently upgraded its North Bowl chair to a high-speed quad, they left the Lower Mountain Boulder chair, which provides access from the Boulder parking lot to this North Pole lift, as a slow, fixed grip triple. We get that lift upgrades are expensive, but from a logistical standpoint, we're not really sure why the resort chose to leave the boulder lift as it is, given the boulder-north bowl combination primarily serves as a means to travel from the boulder base to the rest of the mountain. In addition, Heavenly does not offer high-speed lift access to any of its beginner terrain, and upgrading the boulder lift would have addressed this crucial issue. The lack of an investment here is especially surprising, considering how much Vail Resorts has focused on beginner lift access at their other mountains. Some folks familiar with resort operations have claimed that the Boulder Base's parking setup is the culprit. The Boulder Lot can only hold a fraction of the cars of Heavenly's other bases, and with traffic in Tahoe only getting worse, resort management may have felt that the additional demands brought about by a faster lift would have overwhelmed the area. But on the other hand, other familiar parties have told us that a Boulder upgrade is actually coming in the next one to two years, although no plans have been officially confirmed by Vail Resorts. Ultimately, we'll just have to wait and see on this one. It's also unlikely that Heavenly's sister resort Kirkwood will see notable upgrades anytime soon. The resort hasn't seen a single lift upgrade since Vail bought it in 2012, and while there are at least three lifts we can think of that could really benefit from high-speed upgrades, the resort just doesn't experience the visitation we think Vail would need to see to pull the trigger on any of them. And finally, let's discuss Keystone's Wayback Quad, a lift that's less frustrating for its ride time, although it is a pretty drawn-out 9 minutes, and more annoying for the fact that guests are forced to ride it to get out of the furthest back outback mountain zone. To make matters more frustrating, there are no lodges or even bathrooms in the outback area, so guests hoping to escape some cold weather or take a bathroom break will have to put up with a leisurely ride here first. So why hasn't Wayback been upgraded, even as Keystone has prepped three new high-speed six-packs in the past six years? Well, Wayback has historically only directly served two trails, so while it's a critical lift for leaving the outback zone, it hasn't exactly been a practical pod for laving trails. However, a handful of new runs off the upcoming Bergman Bowl lift will also filter back to this chair, so this circumstance will certainly change in the coming seasons. And with the Wayback lift now over three decades old, perhaps Vail Resorts will revisit this one. There are also a handful of other notable lifts that remain slow, including Okimo's out-of-base Southridge A and B quads, Heavenly's Galaxy Lift, and a large chunk of Park City's Canyon side, but we'll leave those for another time. So while the dozens of lift upgrades at Vail owned mountains may come across as anywhere from much needed to fairly bonkers, the truth of the matter is that Vail Resorts had strategic reasons for every one of them. And while we could easily argue that certain resorts or mountain areas that didn't receive upgrades should have been prioritized over the ones that did, Vail is a massive public company, and it's ultimately going to do what's best in the eyes of its shareholders. Keeping lifts reliable, trying to mitigate choke points, and investing in the beginner experiences at popular resorts are all pretty good reasons to prioritize lift enhancements, and each of these pillars will all be critical to maintaining visitation throughout the years and decades to come. There's also another reason why right now is a particularly significant moment in Vail Resorts' lift investment journey. The company just released their full year 2023 financial report, and it looks like they've significantly pulled back on lift projects for the next few seasons. After installing a combined 25 new lifts for 2021 and 2022, 
the company only has five new lifts scheduled to debut this year, one of which was delayed from last year, and three scheduled for 2024. Instead, Vail is focusing on stock buybacks, paying out dividends, and spearheading other experience strategies that don't have to do with major infrastructure overhauls. Some may pin this on Vail Resorts being a large mega corporation, and others might lay the blame on rising interest rates. But either way, the upgrades we have now are, for the most part, the ones we'll be living with for the foreseeable future, and if this means that some non-strategic areas retain less than ideal lift setups for the next several years, that's just the reality of the situation. If you found this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you want to see more analysis like this that won't make it up in our videos, be sure to subscribe to our exclusive newsletter, which is linked in the description below. See you for the next one.